So as a as a Canadian, as I observe what's going on in the US and this really this crazy polarization of light and dark really in in a, in a lot of ways. And I know we live in a in a in a human experience is an experience of polarities. But as I observe the polarities that are going on in in your country uh, during this election, I keep having to check myself going like, am I am I being manipulated in one in this way? Am I be being manipulated in this way to think a certain way to put my support in one place or another? And and as I as I do that, as I have that experience, I mean, some people just ignore it. They go, well, you know what? It doesn't really matter. I don't really care. I think we're past that point. I think we have a responsibility to actually check ourselves and go, okay, what does this feel like for me? And am I being manipulated? And so I always, you know, I, I really pride myself on being a very centered person. So I always come back to that place. When I start getting pulled in that direction, I get start getting pulled in that direction. I always come back to that centered place, to so that that really that heart and mind coherence that that uh, you know people like like my friend Greg Braden talk about, right? Which is very simple, just you know touching the heart, slowing down your heart rate a little bit, and going and just asking, touching your heart, and just saying, you know, heart. Am I being manipulated here? Am I allowing myself to be pulled in one direction or another? And then just letting the answer that comes up, letting that guide us. And then coming and then perceiving things from that centered place. But I want to ask you as, as an American and as a, you know, as as you know, a great friend and a, and a coach and uh, you know, as as far as I'm concerned, you know, a a, a thought leader you know, in, in many, many parts of, of the polarities of the human experience. Can you give me your reflections and overviews and, and what's coming up for you right now? Yeah, thanks, Tim. You know, I would say that it's been a time of deep reflection. Like it always is as a coach and somebody who is responsible feels a tremendous responsibility for serving. Almost like a capital S serving. You know how we talk about truth? Like what is truth? Like capital T truth. The idea of being radical, radically aligned. You use the word authentically aligned. Mm. And so then it, it really brings us back to the idea of like what is authenticity within a country and what is what does it mean to be an american and to try to put people into these polarizing you know areas democrat republican independent when we are each individual unique human beings so we go through in this country from birth and just like most people, a conditioning process into the values, the philosophies, the beliefs of your family, your state, your culture, your region of the country. And so let's just look at that, you know, from the areas of complexity of just one of them in terms of recovering yourself. So as a coach, the people that are coming to me are coming to me from every walk of life, from the lower class, economic class, political diversity, although um, it's interesting how I polarize a more liberal, although I do have Republican because of wealth, mm -hmm. um, political, you know, ideology, political um, identity in terms of my own clients. So you're asking a really deep question to a man, leader, servant of humanity, spends pretty much the good part of his day doing what you're talking about, discerning, who am I? 
what does it mean to be an authentic man on the planet, a leader of humanity? Mm -hmm. um, by which I'm saying, all right, the only thing that's going to really help is people being bold. Well, of course, we've got the Democrats being bold, the Republicans being bold. I was just in Philadelphia. I went to Independence Hall where the Declaration of Independence was signed and I read it. And you have to kind of go back to the current reality of the 1700s, of these, these British, these um, people that traveled across the ocean and basically took over a country uh, to get away from religious persecution, to for their freedom, that kind of thing. And what did they do? They came over and they basically just imprisoned and destroyed other, you know, beautiful indigenous people. And so, like, when you ask me that, it's not a simple question. Mm. It's like, okay, there are powers. They have the ability to shape human reality. They've created schooling and a schooling system to begin the indoctrination. And so when you're critical, like I am a critical theorist, my PhD level training, my master's level higher education training was in sociology, anthropology, psychology. And the majority of it is was in teasing apart the powers, the political elite, even putting the electoral college system in place when you break that apart, it keeps the system itself in place. So the idea that there's this multicultural diversity, this, this unity is ludicrous to me. That when I'm working, and, and I'm working at a high level with people to disentangle themselves from the matrix, from, from the, the cultural conditioning, from the prison bars, you know, Freedom's Edge. Mm -hmm is about the cage mm -hmm. and almost everyone who comes to me everyone who comes to me there's some version whether it's the internal prison that they built to cope with the external world that they live in trauma man it does not take much to traumatize a person and, and to and to scare a person and to trigger that nervous system into hiding let me tell you my real view well, when I tell you my real view, your conditioned view then comes back. And sometimes it's violent and brutal. And and, and it's just, in, it, it's incredible how much violence there is that they say it's one thing in terms of this. I think of this Luke's third dimension of power. It's one thing when A has power over B because they can bully him. Let's just pull out a military, you know, let's just pull something out and we will beat you into submission. It's another thing when A has power over B and B doesn't even know mm. that power has been instilled. It's been, it's been integrated inside of you through the cultural conditioning, through discipline and punishment, through shaming. So the recovery of the authentic self which you and I are all about is the work of what we're doing. And so when I think about what's going on right now in our political system, I think about a structure that got built to protect the political elite, the economic elite, to keep people, the vast majority of people working for it. And I see it as a really advanced form of slavery. And so then, okay, one side says this, they're going to do this. The other side said that, says they're going to do this. So I was reading about where it was that re the Republican, where was it in all of this that Republican came out of it? And in one of the documents, I, I can't remember the document, you know, that I was reading, handwritten, that the Republicans, they just wanted more state sovereignty. They wanted more control of their state and didn't want the federal government to impose itself on the state. And so when you look at our governing system, you'll see uh, that, that the red, it's people that want, they want to protect their state. Mm -hmm. And it's moved into economics, right? That, that 
It's about taxation. It's about having more control and autonomy. Well, we know that that's part of the problem, that those who own the means of production tend to rule the planet. And they have proven that they won't do that in a way that takes into consideration all of the people. So this is where I know we're recording this, but this fucking is a fucked up thing happening on our planet. And I, when I think about, well, cock. So let me just tell you, I just wrote that and I touched a nerve, 500 people, people commenting. Of course, you got the 10% that think that, I don't even know where some of the people on the planet come from, honestly. <laughs> but it's about men taking responsibility for that thing you and I wrote. Where are, all, where are the leaders on this planet? The awakened leaders who are discerning, who understand that the systems we have built are destroying the planet. They're leading to hate. They're leading to divisiveness. That's being done very deliberately from my perspective. So to then come to voting when I have a knowledge base and it's thousands of hours investigating this particular, even Christianity, Tim. Sure. Like, you know what, if I'm going to use Christianity as a framework and a lens by which I filter reality, I'm not going to just take the Bible hook, line and sinker, right? I'm going to like come at that from a critical perspective. And so then I found my authenticity, my discernment. So that choice is available. I choose, I, in my sovereignty and in my, in my truth, believe this. And even then, when you get into non-duality and some of the places we take our clients, tell me that there's hate there <laughs> in our essence, you know? No. Sure. So I'll stop there. Where I, what I feel like is I feel responsible for waking up when we get into Wilbur's book, Finding Radical Wholeness, mm -hmm. that, that that thing Christ was about, wholeness, being able to operate in truth and authenticity of the thing that you started with, authentic alignment. I think there's layers of it depending on the state and stage of consciousness that the individual is at. I think that we keep some people at a very high state of intellectual ability but in a very low state or stage of awakening. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so you can be indoctrinated through the K through system to be nice, be smart. You got to go from K through 12 to college and then, and then get a job within the system. Well, if we looked at the stratification system, those who are in the fields closest to the market make the most money on the planet. Those teachers, those social workers make the less who are in those women and traditionally, historically. And so we've got, we do have a form of oppression, but if you start to look at the economics, it's really a power base. It's not just men doing that to women. It's a power structure. Yeah. And now the women, the women rightly so begin to stand up. And what do you got to do with that? Well, you've got to use masculine energy mm -hmm. to become you know, to take back your power. Well, there's something off with that. When a woman has to do that and men are protecting from the beginning, taking responsibility for our role on this planet, which is to protect women and to, to be the, the leaders, the warriors. Maybe like the new leader to me is, is, is the leader who knows his strength and power and is inclusive and loving and kind I think this is the direction we're moving towards. Mm -hmm. I wasn't with you with Greg Braden, but I would imagine heart, mind, coherence. It's one of the deepest things you can do. What's there? Well, I think I think it's I think it's so important in this moment mm -hmm. as we as we as we as we stand in the in this storm of information and it's emotional information it's spiritual information it's political information and and we live in an information technology society so we're bombarded by it regardless of whether we 
have our phone on or off. It doesn't really matter. It's there all around us. And so m more than ever, I believe it's important to come to that centered place, which, yes. is, which, we can, which we can get to so easily by just simply closing our eyes, slowing down our breath, becoming aware of our body and the human experience, breathing, touching the heart. Because I mean, I believe that if we live from the heart and this heart and mind, when we're in coherence with our heart and our mind, because if we live from this thing, we're gonna get bamboozled every single time, right? We've got to work those two things together and and just just simply ask, you know, what is my next, what is my next step? What is my next step? Yes, I'm having these feelings. Yes, I'm having this anxiety. Yes, I'm overwhelmed on on how this one huge polarized political structure in the United States is affecting me in Canada, and I see it affecting the entire world. And armies are facing off against each other to see what's going to happen. And, you know, is it time to go? Is it time not? All of this stuff, regardless of all that craziness, if I can come back to this place, just for a moment, mm -hmm. every day, then I'll be yeah. able to navigate this crazy ass pendulum of politics, emotions, manipulation, as you said, like an age old years and years and years and years and layers and layers and layers that's all bubbling to the surface and shows up as, in the end, masculine and feminine, separated. Can I bring those things together? And as a man in this, in this life, mm -hmm. as a man, can I live from that place? And can that be my message? And can that be the way that that I guide and I lead in what I do as as a coach for myself, as a as a musician, as a as a public figure? You know, can you just speak to that for a moment? I think in the infinite, it's where all right on the surface we have these systems and structures were built. Mm -hmm. I find that it's very, very sick. I find I've actually seen it in a vision as like a, a disease that sits right under. We, we have a disease as a human species that is toxic and killing us. It's not who we are. Mm -hmm. So when I think about what you're talking about, my role in that and figuring out how, how to move in the infinite, because we're also on this planet that in this universe and in this cosmos it's doing nothing but expanding mm -hmm. and that there there is something much deeper going on here most people who live on this planet 99.999 are caught with their feet on the ground in their current city their current you know uh family yeah they're not necessarily aware of, of all of this no, and we, we could say it's a flaw in the human genetic. It's a flaw. Or is it human... or, or is or is it just part of the human experience? Is that it's just the yes. way it's supposed to be? That blindness. And are we a grand experiment, right? You know? <laughs> when you think about just even even the millions and billions of years old of of beings interacting and playing with this. I don't know about you, Tim, but I touch it all the time. I am. There is so much more going on in this field that you've been talking about. It's just natural now. Having stripped and removed so much charge, having healed past life uh, through past life regressions, having going into hypnosis, you know, a hundred times. And then feeling, still feeling this little ache right here in my body that when I get touched a certain way, oh my God, what is that? What is that? And then I touch my ancestral DNA line of my grandmothers and grandfathers, and that blood is moving through me. We're just talking about being uh, my, our, our ancestral line. Mine goes right to Ireland and Scotland and Britain. I got in German. And I, I've got this really interesting blend of ancestors moving through my blood. Every, every bit of my beingness believes that we are living misaligned as a species. 
And so then it becomes, what is my responsibility as a man who has been given such a beautiful view of reality? Can I write? Can I communicate? Can I influence? Yes, I can. Is it bold to stand out there, right, as one of those people saying this way? Yes, it is. Will I give my life for that? Yes, I would. I know, I know we are not living in alignment. We are way off. Mother Earth is screaming at us. I feel that in a dimension way beyond. Of course, I feel it in heart, mind, coherence. I feel my love for this planet. I feel the Earth and its heart and its mind and its overall beingness. And I feel such a responsibility. There it is again. Tell me what you want me to do. How do I work with our people? What do, look what we're doing to animals. How, how do I work with our people? Mm -hmm. Clear cutting force. How do I work with our people? I love this earth. It's like mind blowing to walk into your mountains in Vancouver mm -hmm. and to feel and touch the rivers and the trees and the birds and the oh, just life. Well, and and as I as I watch these, thank you so much for that for that that vision. As I watch all of these groups of people, we're talking like stadiums full of people coming together, okay? And they're love fests. Some of the love fests are from a dark place and some of the love fests are from a light place or they're both at the same time. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, we're talking about that you and I, I know we share this belief that we are just one part of all of human energy, okay? Of all of the people on the planet, the, all the people of the planet, humanity is really truly one organism, okay? And what happens with one affects the other. And that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the political system to me is a way to manipulate, is a way to manipulate those emotional liabilities, I guess, is what I would, the way that I would, I would say it, because I feel myself getting pulled in that direction and pulled in that direction, depending on, you know, what comes up in my feet or what I watch. But being aware of the larger part, but also being aware of my part within it is what keeps me in a place of not having too much importance on everything that is going on. And a lot of the training that we've done together is about reducing importance. So importance and coherence for me are intertwined. Um, we should we should wrap this up. Give, a, give me some, some final words on, on how you feel that that people can navigate this time, regardless of what their views, beliefs, or political you know, identifications are. I just was writing about self-intimacy, hmm. you know, and so many, so many times intimacy is about like you seeing me and me seeing you, but also you seeing you mm -hmm. and cultivating through contemplation, through sitting, through breath work, it's like that essential reclamation, but you can't do it if you're getting yanked around. Mm -hmm. The only thing I've found that really brings those pendulums in together is processing, meditation, breath work, nature. Nature. And, and when I was just talking about just, I'm really in love with life. So, but it did not come without the thousand hours on the cushion the 1800 hours of doing your, your exercise, mm -hmm. being committed, committed to being at the driver's seat of my reality. Mm -hmm. I do believe that beliefs can be oppressive. They can turn you off from being open to. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. You and I could sit and talk about this and go down the rabbit hole about 15 <laughs> different topics. It's a bunch of different ways. Yeah. There, there is because, yeah. but the self, when you're in that driver's seat, it's really inquisitive. It's like, why, why is that? Why is that? And you start to use the intellect. That's why 
It's really important that at this stage of human evolution, we move out of the emotional body mm -hmm. and being controlled by our emotions, which have been socially constructed feeling, right? You should feel this way because shame on you. It's been mm -hmm. so we, we are moving esoterically, energetically into the into the mental. Not that we don't enjoy feeling, but there has to be this, this, this transition in an evolutionary way to the big mind. And I'm not talking about brain. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about being at the steering wheel and being able to regulate from a very, very beautiful place of self or finding radical wholeness from wholeness. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm feeling responsible for in it all. Mm -hmm. And I will live the, I will, I will for the rest of my life offer myself in the service of finding wholeness and love. Mm -hmm. How about you? Uh, I, I mean, again, you know, as I said, I'm, uh, I believe the, the, the most, the best thing that I can do is to observe, discern, take it in. And just simply ask, what is an action that I can take in this situation mm -hmm. that will that will in some way support people to bring them back to center, to, to, to also be doing the same thing, to be able to observe it in a discerning way and feel it and know what their next action is. So this this connection to instinct and intuition is truly our greatest divine gift and that is for me on a daily basis is my number one action to take every day is to connect to that because when i am in that place and yes i'll waver during the day but i can always come back to that place that is a place that is real yes that is, that is a place that has solidity, it has foundation. And when, yes. I, am, when I, I am in that place, there's clarity. Even if I can't see all the way through the fog, the fog does clear, okay? And so that that's, that's what it is for me. Um, question. So I, with, with the knowingness that, that you have these incredible gifts that, that you and I have been been working on together and, and individually. Is there still value in your vote? Mm -hmm. Will you be voting? It's a great question. You know, I'm registered. And right now I'm undecided. I don't really favor either candidate. When I look at our economic system, our political system, I see that money and greed and control is played out on both sides. Mm -hmm. So it's like really which one is being more authentic both both very trained business people lawyers within our current law system it's hard to disentangle either one of them from the power structures so to me it's very difficult to pick the lesser of evil you know the <laughs> i think that i i think that they're both good people i think that you know trump has been really silenced in a lot of ways i think that there are there's a lot of control happening here and manipulation happening here. And I don't like to participate in that. Um, when I think about whether I vote or not, when I think about my job, my calling, my purpose, it's to wake people up. It's to help take people through the healing process of coming back to themselves. Of course, of course, of course. And not, I think you're, that you're, this you're whole... Not, you're not giving me the answer here. Yeah, because I don't have it yet. Okay. 
I it's one of those places I think it's really interesting to say I'm not voting. There's the shame. Mm. There's the fear. There's the judgment. Now there's a part of me that can have compassion for humanity caught in this mess. And I can handle the judgment, right? Happens right at home. Just talking to my mom about voting and saving the women. Kamala about our daughters and reproductive rights and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> it's a lot more complicated. A vote is a lot more complicated. How much of a difference does it really make in the end? And So spiritually, that's more of a spiritual question for me than it is a practical daily Mm. Okay. Question. I just want to reflect back to you that yeah. we are having this human experience. It's a it's an individual and a collective experience. We know that already. We agree on that. And you know what I put out into the world has impact on the whole. So when I look at at voting, and and I'm I'm a person who, who rarely votes. Our vote does have an impact, just like every word that we put out, like we'll put we'll put this out on into into the into the consciousness. We'll put this out on social media. You know that has impact. This conversation has impact. What we do individually with our clients, it has impact because we are part of a collective. So I think a vote does have an impact. Regardless of whether whether it's for one or the other, it's still a choice that's in front of us. And it is a choice of the heart. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I guess we'll we'll just leave it there. Touch, touching the collective, though, the collective knows how I feel, Mo knows my vote. Mm -hmm. My vote is my vote is for none of the above. And I mean the entire system, mm -hmm. the entire structure. My vote is to remove the power players that are dominating humanity, that, that this whole voting thing is a scam in, in itself. <laughs> and so... That's my vote, and that's what I'm taking responsibility for is dismantling it. The powers, the powers are really pulling the puppet strings. And to say that, to manage like states and stages of change in a collective humanity when the vast majority does not understand that and has not done the level of work I've done to understand and discern what I'm saying about the powers. If you were to do that work, you would uncover some things that would bring you to a new level of discernment and then yes. a, a new level of understanding and a new level of choice. Yes. So that I hear you saying that you know, the vote does make a difference. When I'm playing at the, I feel like, Tim, I'm playing at a very high level with what you're talking about. And so to move my energy towards something that doesn't feel authentically aligned is a problem for me. Mm-hmm. A lot of work to make it inauthentically aligned if I were to do it. So it's important that do I care about women's rights? Do I care about the, the the issues that we're putting out in front? Of course I do. I want to change reality. That's what my my directions have been. And what is the best course of action to alter reality and transition humanity to its next phase in evolution? I personally feel that it's in what we're doing and that that's the biggest area of impact that I can make. hundred percent. So thank you so much. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. No, no, thank you for having a, a, a frank conversation between yes, we are all part of, of the human family, but in this lifetime, you were an American. I am a Canadian, you know, and I just, I just send my my love to to you you and your 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 collective country in in uh in this 
exercise that that you're in right now and and uh yeah just sending so much love brother to you and your family yes you so too please brother stay safe down there okay yes i will thanks so much tim Good seeing you. I'll see you next Monday. Sounds great. See you later. All right.